Let me turn to Theodore Katouf. He's the former U.S. ambassador to Syria and the current president of Amid East. That's a nonprofit education and training organization. Ambassador, welcome. Thank you. So you've got these talks going on in Astana, uh, rebel representatives not meeting face to face with government representatives. These seem like same old familiar problems we've had in previous peace talks. So how much progress can really be made in this round of negotiations in Astana when we really haven't seen anything substantial in past negotiations? Sure. Well, this has been an incredibly bitter and awful conflict uh, going on now almost for six years. There is no trust, of course, between the armed opposition and the Syrian regime of Bashar al-Assad, uh, and no reason particularly for there to be any trust uh, between them, given all that has occurred. Despite the ceasefire, uh, Bashar's forces have uh, struck at selected targets uh, occupied by the opposition, particularly outside Damascus, near a major water pumping station into the city, and that's been uh, tremendously controversial. What's new, however, is the fact that Russia and Turkey, backing opposite sides in this conflict, have both moved closer to one another and have organized this and got both sides to come to the table. And for the first time, the Syrians have accepted to sit with the armed opposition, not just uh, representatives of the Syrian National Council and the like. So is it safe to say that Russia and Turkey are giving the region, giving Syria, really the best chance for peace when the United States did not do that? Well, they basically have much more influence on fighters on the ground than Syria, or excuse me, than the U.S. Mm -hmm. Syria obviously has benefited greatly from Russian military support as well as Iran and Hezbollah in Lebanon. And Turkey uh, has been a major benefactor and a major supporter of the armed opposition. And now Russia and Turkey both are looking for a way out and therefore likely to pressure their uh, separate uh, clients to uh, compromise. Ambassador, I hate to be negative and pessimistic, but what will happen if there is very little progress in Astana, or, or, or pretty much they refuse to meet face to face and the talks come to an end, you go to Geneva, then you have another round of negotiations in Geneva. What needs to happen? You mentioned trust. How do you build trust to make things move forward? Well, the opposition has said, look, it's not enough to declare a ceasefire. We're getting hit by Assad's forces or others allied with Assad. We need a clear monitoring uh, and enforcement mechanism uh, where the ceasefire is concerned. Russia, for the first time I recall, has criticized the regime for uh, violating the ceasefire. They might not have said it quite in those terms, but they essentially said it. And that means that the Russians are looking for a way out of this conflict. They don't want to get bogged down forever. They want a political solution. They're not looking to push Assad aside, but they understand that the opposition has to be accommodated. And finally, I have to ask you about the new administration in office in Washington, President Trump. He has picked Secretary of State-designate Rex Tillerson as his Secretary of State. What are your concerns? What are you thinking when you think about Syria policy? And what would you like to see from this administration? Well, in terms of concerns, oddly enough, when it comes to Syria, uh, the outlook of President Trump and his newly forming administration uh, may actually help bring an end to this war, because Trump does not have the baggage of having called for the ouster of Bashar al-Assad. On the contrary, he said, Assad's not posing any real threat to the United States. Our problem is with Daesh, with the uh, ISIL. ISIL, the uh, extremists. And therefore, uh, he basically is adopting a position that's not far from Russia uh, on this entire issue. And he wants, he has pledged in his inaugural address to, quote, wipe ISIL from the face of the earth, a fairly tall order, I would think. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, that's his priority. And that might not bode well for the opposition if they want to continue the war. We'll leave it there. Ambassador Theodore Katouf, thank you so much, sir, for being here. Thank